Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jarrett Johnson, and as always, we have a bunch of really good questions from inside the Red Raiders subscribers, so I'm going to dive right into them. The first one comes from Texan44, who uh, basically, this is a long question, it's a good question, but I'm going to paraphrase. Um, it's about, uh, you know, now it's personal, that motto that, uh, of course, there's that sound bite that head coach Matt Wells gave about realignment, about UT and OU, OU leaving for the SEC, um, and just where Texas Tech's places in, in, you know, the college football landscape now and the college athletics uh, landscape. And he just basically called upon West Texas and uh, Raiderland, you know, Texas Tech fans everywhere to kind of come together and, and to control what, you know, we can control in terms of uh, you know, people can choose to tune in to the game. They can choose to uh, turn out to the games, to fill the seats. And uh, Texan wants to know if I personally think it's a, a great idea and uh, does Tech need to come together? He says, uh, do, I, do I like this strategy? Uh, or should they go with a different approach? No, I think, you know, be proactive. I mean, I think this was the best way, as you put it, that they could say, hey, we need you to, uh, you know, come to the game. We need you to tune in. We need you to uh, to care, basically. You know, it, it is personal. So, you know, while that was obviously staged, that whole soundbite, I still thought Coach Wells did a good job. I thought it was a good idea from Texas Tech. And, I mean, it is true. I mean, they, they, they need people to show up and show out uh, more than ever. And I know uh, from the other perspective, from tech fans, I understand that, uh, you know, I understand what the level of frustration with tech football over the years. I mean, I really do. I get it. Uh, it's understandable. Uh, but that being said, this is uh, the time that if you do care about Texas Tech football, Texas Tech athletics, this is the time to show up uh, and to support the, the program, the school, and the university. I, I, I think they're right. I don't want to over-dramatize what, you know, the need for Tech fans to show up. But, yeah, it, this is. this is It's go time. They need them, um, and I agree with the strategy. I think anything that they can do, it's not just that. They're doing a lot of things. I think some lettermen are really rallying, to They're doing, you know, messages on social media. This is a concerted uh, effort by Tech Athletics to, you know, not a campaign, if you will, but at least an informal um, objective of reaching out through social media and the media uh, to the to the fan base and to implore them to show up and support support the program. I think it's a good idea. You got to do something, right? It's better than just sitting back and taking it. So I like it. All right. Next question comes from Oregon Matador, who says, uh, "Do you have a feeling that uh, Tech is going to abuse some Big Twelve secondaries this year?" He says he knows some of the rosters have some good DBs. But does anyone really have the, the hosses to stop Mason Tharp, who's 6'9", by the way. Eric Izukama, who's 6'3", but, man, he is built like a truck, like a train, actually. I mean, he's just, defenders just bounce off him right now. Uh, he's uh, he's a real weapon, all Big 12 receiver last year. I think mean, he's going to be better this year, so uh, no. Uh, Jaran Bradley, 6'6", 6'5", depending on where you look. Uh, true freshman receiver who just looks like a center post enough on DBs. Uh, he mentioned in the red zone. He says, that's not even to mention the quicker guys like Geiger, uh, Miles Price, McLean Mannix, Dalton Rigdon, those guys, and the running backs of the backfield. So, no, to answer your question, I think this is about as good of a spot in terms of spread, like spreading the talent around in many spots. Like, you're going to have to pick your, you know, your poison with Texas Tech because you can't leave EZ single cover. If you don't, if you don't double EZ and just say, we're going to take him out of the game, then he is going to torch you. I mean, I'm talking about six, seven catches, 130, 40 yards, and a couple scores is what he's going to do. I mean, just look on the schedule last year. He did that last year, and he's going to have much better. I don't care who the quarterback is. Uh, I think he's going to have a better guy, throwing, better arm throwing him the ball. Uh, even if it's Columbia again, he looks better than he did last year. His arm strength appears to be stronger. So, uh, obviously, um, Tyler Shuck is, was named the starting quarterback, so that's – who you're expecting to uh, be throwing the ball. And him and EZ have already really built a rapport. They work a ton away from just regular practice on their timing. So, um, I, you know, just just start with him, EZ. you got to double him. So that means 
more than likely single coverage for some guys who are some real threats. And you mentioned Duran Bradley, you mentioned Mason Tharp, and Mason Tharp, 6'9", 255, and can run away from people. Um, I think you're hearing a lot of people talk about him. It's because, look, we know Tyler Shuck likes to throw to tight ends. Uh, he looked for Mason in that scrimmage, uh, the open scrimmage, the fandemonium. Sorry, I was searching for the word fandemonium. Uh, you know, often and made some really good catch. He was open. So easy, unless he's doubled, stays open. So does Tharp. Then you got a plethora of guys, whether it be Trey Cleveland, who's 6'4 and can run, by the way. Uh, you mentioned Bradley. Yes, big dude. Uh, Loic Fawanji is another 6'4 track star in high school, four star guy coming out of Middle Lee. Um, I, I'm, JJ Sparkman is a 50 50 ball, which is really a 70 30 or 80 20 with him. Uh, he is just a physical beast. He looks and plays so much bigger than what he's listed at. <clears throat> so I'm sure I'm forgetting some people. But, uh, no, I, you know, if the offensive line plays well, which I believe it has opportunity to, um, and Tech has the timing down and everything, they're going to be really tough to stop. And I think they're going to throw the ball down the field this year, much more than we've seen the last couple of years. They have the arms to do it. Um, I believe the scheme is going to dictate that. And also, they certainly have the big targets to do so as well. This is an interesting question. Texas Tech Austin said, uh, Arkansas is the last season in the Southwest Conference. They had been a top 10 team and on a regular basis, good program. But then they got they got beat up their last year in the Southwest Conference. He's wondering if that same thing could happen to Texas. Yeah. You know, I remember when, you know, Arkansas left. I was younger and all that. <clears throat> but I remember that. I remember it happening, and I don't remember them struggling the last year, though. I don't remember ex the scenario, the context exactly, other than what you told me. So it's kind of hard to compare to Texas. But Texas, they haven't been a top-10 team. This has been one of the worst stretches, if not the worst stretch, um, in UT football history. So, And they're going through, you know, a new, it's a new coaching staff and all that yet again. So I don't think it would be like I know they're being they're rated high and highly and all this stuff and they got the annual preseason hype about how great Longhorn football is going to be. But I mean, do we really know? I mean, do we even know how good the quarterback's going to be? Do we know? I mean, for me, I always question. Just like I know Texas has talent, that's undeniable. I'm not saying they don't, but I'm questioning just how talented they are because. I know from a recruiting perspective, and this is a real thing, We all, all of us that are in the game and have been covering recruiting for a long time, we know this to be a thing. It just is that Texas recruits are ranked higher than they probably would be if they went to other places. Like, for example, if they chose, I don't know, Baylor or Oklahoma State or Tech, the, the same recruit wouldn't be ranked as high as he is signing with Texas. I mean, you see it all the time. It'd be like a middle to high three-star. All of a sudden, it gets that four-star bump once they commit to Texas. And you're like, is he really that talented, or is it just he, is he getting that longhorn bump? And that's, that's a real thing. Now, like I said, they get really talented guys. I'm not saying they, they don't. I'm just saying the whole talent is the whole roster isn't made up of that kind of talent like we saw in the Mac Brown era or and of course you know before that so it's a little misleading so to answer your question do I think UT could be had this year absolutely do I think all the other teams are going to be up to play them yes do I think they'll be up to play Oklahoma as well yes but we're talking about two completely different animals in Oklahoma and Texas and I think Texas can be got for sure all right, Jay Terrell has a really good question about the offensive line. He says, Tech seems to have two all-conference caliber players along the offensive uh, line in Stormont and Deaton. Of course, that's TJ Stormont at left tackle. We transferred in after uh, from TCU after being a second-team All-B-12 performer. Obviously, Sonny Cumbie was there with him at TCU. He knows what he has in him. I've seen Stormont both in the spring and in the fall. Legitimate. He's probably better than I thought he was going to be coming in. Very good left tackle. Immediately makes this offensive line better. Dawson Deaton, four-year starter. Very good player at center. Yeah, both those guys are Big 12 caliber, all Big 12 caliber offensive linemen and will probably be playing in the NFL. Whether they're drafted or un they get a shot as an undrafted free agent, they'll probably have at least a shot in the NFL because of their talent and uh, ability. So, what about the rest of the offensive line? Well, I left guard. You have Western Wright returning. I think he's a good player. He needs to be consistent, and I think he can be. 
Um, he looked, he's looked solid. Like there wasn't ever a moment this spring where I was like, Ooh, or I mean this off season where I thought, Ooh, what's the right? He's just not really holding up. I mean, he's been good. Has he been beaten sometimes? Sure. Tech has a pretty good defensive line, but has he held his own more often than not? Absolutely. Uh, I like Western right at left guard. Really it's the right side where I've had my questions. You have Josh Berger who started uh, all 10 games at right tackle last season, moved down to right guard. He was kind of a smaller guy. So now he's up to 300 pounds, 6'4", 300, which you don't think that's small. But, I mean, that kind of is for today's, you know, big boy college football offensive line. But he is uh, – he plays with the, with an edge. He's been playing a lot better in the in fall than he was in spring. I mean, way better. Almost a night and day difference. And I, I attribute that, A, to him just getting used to playing the position a little bit more. Uh B, he's got some want to to him, which I like. A feisty dude. And C, uh, Dawson Deaton has helped a lot. You know, him working next to Dawson Deaton has really settled him down. So uh, I, I think Josh Berger is going to be just fine at right guard, where if you ask me that in spring, I'm like, Ugh, we'll have to see. Now, right tackle, Caleb Rogers, that's a question. Uh, you know, he played some as a true freshman last year, got beat up some. But I mean, I argue there's not a lot of true freshmen out there that wouldn't get beat up in Power 5 football. It's just, I mean, you know, people say this or that about Big 12 defenses, but they've actually gotten better, and they have some serious. Every team has some serious animals coming off the edge, some really good players. Uh, you know, on the outside, so even the backups. So, uh, Caleb Rogers, he learned a lot in his true freshman year, and he's bigger. He looks more like more like an offensive lineman, and uh, like a, like a college football offensive lineman. And I tell you what, in the scrimmage, he played. Like, really, really well. I, I, there was one point where they blitzed his side, blitzed him hard, and overloaded that side, and he picked up two guys. He knocked his dude down up. He saw it coming, first off. Uh, Shuck and Deaton pointed out the blitz. They knew it was coming. He was able to pick up both guys. Shuck was able to get rid of the ball for a big game to EZ. And I, I was like, okay, they can do it. I can see it. You know, they... they uh, he can execute. It's not just about rec recognition. It's also about being able to execute the blocking scheme. And though they're asking him to do a lot, I mean, it's always protect inside out. So that makes sense. That's part of it. And, uh, you know, Rogers sh has shown me in, in camp that he has the ability. He does. And the coaching staff has been saying that. I've been kind of like, mm, we'll see. I mean, ability is one thing, but... You know, potential means you haven't done it yet. And he's starting to come around to where I feel like, yeah, like he's legitimate. And I feel really good about those starting five. Uh, I also feel uh, I feel good about Landon Peterson. If he's called upon to play any either of the guard spots, I think Clayton Franks has shown me some things. He can play sitter or both guard spots. And, you know, I, Ethan Card is where, I don't know, he looked, he struggled against... Yeah, and Coach Patterson dialed up a lot of blitzes in that scrimmage, but he struggled. You know, I I hope uh, he could come on, but he's still young. I, I that's the thing about him is he has the I think he has the athleticism. He certainly has the size. So I mean, people develop at different rates. I just feel like there's a lack of depth at tackle overall. Whether Card comes on or not, you'd like to have at least two guys there. And I I don't see two legitimate backups at tackle right now. So that's something to be aware of. I mean, Stormont and Rodgers and Card, really, because all three of them are going to play at least some, uh, they all need to stay healthy for Texas Tech to really accomplish what they want to on offense this year. So we'll see. All right, Mr. Clicks asks, where does Tyler Shuck rank in terms of quarterbacks that I've covered over the years? I mean, I've covered some really good ones. I mean, uh, all three levels, whether it be, you know, Kyler Murray or uh, – and you just go down the list, like from high school all the way up. Some really, really good uh, quarterbacks. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes. You know, I started covering him and, and interviewing him his junior year at White House all the way through Tech, of course. Uh, and, I mean, that's, he's a generational talent, so that, that's kind of hard to top. I mean, I covered the Cotton Bowl with uh, Johnny Football there, and he was one of the more electric uh, players I've ever, I've ever seen in person, to be honest. I know he's an Aggie. But, I mean, you got to call it like it is. He was truly electric in college. Uh, and that was that was really fun to watch. And that was, you know, his first year, his Heisman year, when they beat Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. And he was just, I just don't know how to tell you. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, there at Jerry World, he was just one of the most electric sporting events I've ever seen. And it was mostly because of Johnny Football. Uh, RG3, same thing, covered him um, a little bit in college. And then, you know, even when uh, I was at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, 
I wasn't like the main guy covering the Cowboys, but I was one of the you know fleet of people back in the days when newspapers actually had a, you know full rosters or whatever of reporters. And uh, you know one of the things I did was cover the opposing team's notebook, and there was a Thanksgiving with RG3 just. And the, and the Redskins, I hate to say this, trust me, as a womb to the tomb Cowboy fan, but he lit up the Cowboys, and that was another electric performance. I mean, I, that's about as loud as I've, I've heard Jerry World, to be honest, which is surprising. So, uh, you know, I, I've I've covered some good ones. That's just off the top of my head. Um, I, I'm sure there's got to be some other ones uh, out there that uh, Kenny Hill in high school, South Lake Carroll, that state championship team, he was about as dominant. Him and... and uh, Kyler Murray were two of the more about as dominant of high school quarterbacks as you could see. Uh, so yeah, uh, a lot, I've seen a lot of really good talent up close and personal. And Tyler Shuck, in terms of the talent, his arm strength. I'll give you an example. I was at one of the practices and he threw a uh, I don't know like a twelve yard out from the opposite hash. So he put some stank on it. You know, I mean he loaded up, and it's not a hard thing for him. It doesn't take like a lot of effort. But I mean, you know, he, he smoked one out there. And uh, I think it was a running back, actually. Just coming out of his break, he slipped. So they, it was incomplete. And I was talking to somebody. I saw the ball coming towards me, and it bounced. And Because I was on the sideline and was coming at me. And, I, you know, I'm a big dude. You know, I, heck, back in my Uncle Rico days, I was called suction cups because I didn't drop a ball if it hit my hand when I, when I played tight end. But uh, I thought about putting a hand out there to, to stop the ball, and – with the velocity that was coming, uh, the ball was coming at me at with, I, you know, I said, you know what? I don't feel like having my skin ripped off my, my hands by the laces. That's how hard he throws. So, uh, but he also has the ability to throw a touch. He throws a very good deep ball, throws a very good corner route in the red zone. So look for that, those big receivers, uh, you know, those back shoulder fades, of course. He, he has that. He's accurate. Uh, he's big, you know, 6'5", 225, you know. Um, and he's got top end speed. Now he, I don't know about the elusiveness, you know, uh, that's something. And he appears to have good pocket awareness, but I haven't seen him play live in person. I've seen his highlights. I've seen him practice. Those are, those are, that's not the real deal. How does he manage a game? What kind of leader is he really in a game? All that stuff. Cause really he's still relatively young. I mean, yeah, he started seven games, played in at least a couple more the year before, but he's still pretty young. I mean, there's still gonna be some growing pains for Tyler Shuck. So, I would say in terms of talent, he's up there. I would say, you know, I, I mean, I'm not going to say he's more talented than Patrick Mahomes because he's not, but uh, he's upper echelon, let's put it that way, you know, because he checks all the boxes and height and arm and touch and leadership and all that stuff. He just really does. So he's up there. But ask me four months from now, <laughs> you know, where he's at three or four months from now, and uh, that'll be an interesting conversation to see what it is after that. All right, Tech Man says, uh, seeing that the Big 12 was looking at hiring uh, Oliver Luck as a consultant, he says, do I think it's a good idea? He wants to know if it, like, if it was Bowlesby's idea or the rest of the conferences. You know, and I really don't know. And no matter what they say, it's, you got to choose what you believe. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Or there's a lot of times where they just have to say the right thing. So I, I honestly, I don't have any insider info in terms of how that happened. Uh, and then their final question was, uh, can I see any re real value added from the move in terms of the conference's uh, problem solving over the next few years? And I can, and here's why. I mean, Oliver Luck is a known guy. He has great connections. And when I think about consultants and, like, actual helpful consultants, because as you mentioned, how much do consultants actually help in the real business world? And I think it depends on your perspective. If you're, expect if you're expecting them to really to come in and tell people, who, you know, like, their job, like, how to be more efficient in their job, then I don't know. I think some of that's probably overrated. But if you're looking for consultants in terms of contacts, putting you in contact with people you otherwise would not be in contact with, then I think consultants could be very valuable. I mean, that's that's where it's at. To me, that's when I think of consultants, I don't think about the ins and outs, like somebody coming in here and telling me how to, how to be more efficient running my job. I would think about the, con the contacts, putting me in contact with people that I need to talk with in order to get something, you know, find a, a, a right, uh, the right landing spot for Texas Tech with all this conference realignment. So that's from that perspective, do I think Oliver Luck could add value? Absolutely. Padres11 says, after Muddy Waters' kick return for a touchdown, so do I think uh, in the scrimmage, 
Do I think he, uh, he will? They will use him in those situations. If not, who? Yeah, I think he'll get a shot. He's a, you know, I mentioned him as a potential uh, helper in pass rushing on the board here the other day because they're, they're going to blitz him some from like he'll cover the slot some. They'll blitz him off the slot is like that being the fourth rusher instead of like a linebacker or whatever. They're going to be that's part of the reason they like to be multiple is just to keep the offense guessing from you know where they're going to be blitzing or sending a fourth guy fourth rusher if you want to call it a blitz. Uh, from different angles and different positions. And Waters is very adept at that. He's also very adept as a returner. I mean, he's just a versatile dude. He's just a football player. Um, and I think they might use him there. But they have other uh, candidates. I think Miles Price is a guy who could be a good kick returner uh, for you. Dadrian Taylor is a guy who could be good. You know, he was a, a multi-thousand yard back in high school in Oklahoma. Won state championships there in Oklahoma as a running back. Um uh, so we had a storied running back career, so obviously he can do it. Um, Kyron Cumby, speaking of running backs, a guy you brought in, transferred from Illinois, uh, who's a walk-on, but, I mean, you offered him a scholarship at one point out of high school. So, uh, you know, I, I know he's getting looks back there too. Um, trying to think about who else. Those are the main ones, I think. You know, I wonder if McLean Mannix. I know he'll, he'll probably – he might be in the mix for punt return. So that's something to think about. Um, but, no, I think Waters could be a guy. For sure, to uh, to be one of your kick returners. Hey, uh, Jadarius Townsend. I wonder if he'll get a look. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. So, yeah, they have, they have some options, and I definitely think there'll be times where hey, let's send uh, Marquise Waters or Muddy Waters, as they call him, back there to return kicks and see if he can you know make a play for the team. Because you know I think he will more often than not. All right, Tech Freak. This final question. He says uh, it's going to blow some people's minds, but he says if Wells has a winning season, does he get an extension? Or maybe it should be worded how many wins gets Wells an extension. So this will be year three. I believe it was a five-year contract he signed. So he'll still have two years remaining. But uh, I think if he won, I would say nine or more. I mean, if Tech wins nine games this year, he's probably getting an extension. You know, I think Neil Brown just got an extension this last offseason from West Virginia. So. Um, that's just kind of adding confidence to your program on the recruiting trail and the development. You know he's going to be around. He just signed an extension, you know. Um, so it makes sense. But I, I don't, you know, eight wins would be debatable. But I think less than eight wins, I think you ride it out another season and see what happens, you know. Um, I don't know. Some people are just hoping he gets fired. But I think that's wrong. I think they are doing something in terms of building a roster. And I know this sounds cliche, but building a culture. I mean, you can see it when you're out there. And I've been out there a lot this offseason. Uh, they've granted a, a great amount of access to us, and I've taken every opportunity of that, you know, advantage of every opportunity I've had to go out there. Because and, and, there's nothing like seeing it and feeling what is, the program is like uh, in these practices. I mean, people could tell you this or that, but to see it for yourself uh, is what I covet, you know, that access. So I like what I've seen, and I've never shied away, whether it be Wells with his, some of his decision-making last year or Kingsbury before or anybody else. Uh, even Beard, I criticize at times. I know that's a dirty word, but uh, even, you know, all the winning they were doing, there was times I was like, ooh, what, what's going on here? Why'd they do that? I think you have to be honest about what's going on with these programs uh, so that you can improve. So uh, I like what I've seen in terms of roster development and culture from Coach Wells. They got to win, he's got to make, make better decisions, in game decisions. Uh, the players got to help him with that, make him look smarter. That, that's amazing how that, that happens, the Jimmys and the Joes, uh, how it happens where they make coaches look really smart. That needs to happen. They need to win. And I don't think anything more, anything less than nine wins should, in my opinion, since you're asking me. Coach, Kirby Hoka didn't ask me this, that's for sure. But uh, I would think anything less than nine wins, you write it out another year. But I definitely think Wells should come back unless this, this is just a – you know, a disaster season. Uh, other than that, I think he, he comes back and, and we'll see what happens in year four. So, hey, great questions from y'all as always. Man, we're getting so close to Texas Tech kicking off the season. You know, next week it'll be game week, a game week round of uh, the mailbag. So I can't wait for that. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. And until next time.